Let's just do one more example where we'll use U substitution to evaluate the definite integral. And because we've presented sort of two methods for doing this, let's do the example twice using each method in turn. Here's the problem we'll do twice. I edited it slightly from the notes. In the notes, there was a 3x squared. That was a little too similar uh, to the previous problem for my taste. So let's have a 4x squared here. And let's compute to this definite integral. Method one is to ignore the limits of integration for now and simply try to take the indefinite integral. Now, given the context of this video, clearly we're going to be able to use U substitution to solve this problem. But it's always useful to pause and think why we're doing something. Remember that U substitution is a technique for when you have composition. And we do have composition. X cubed plus one composed with the square root. And to use U substitution, you should have the derivative of this inside function, which we more or less do. Um, we come close enough that we can deal with it. We are off by a constant. We don't have 3x squared, we have 4x squared, but that's not a real problem. If we want to have a 3, we can have a 3. We'll multiply by one third so that we are not to changing anything. And now this four and this one third together give you four thirds. And we can pull a constant out of an integral. And now convert to u. This gives us the square root of u. 3x squared dx gives us du. Four thirds times the integral of the square root of u du. Remember the square root of u is u to the one half. So when we anti-differentiate, we'll bump that up by one to three halves. And we'll put a two thirds out front. And 
And finally, we're going to convert back to X. That's the key thing in that sort of makes this the first method as opposed to the second method. So u is x cubed plus one to the three halves and there's our constant. And now, so four times two, eight ninths times x cubed plus one to the three halves. And I might don't remember if we've come across this before in calculus one. But if you have something like four thirds times an arbitrary constant, that's still an arbitrary constant. So we just write C. All right, that was a fair amount of work, but we're now ready to solve the problem. The definite integral is computed by taking the antiderivative we don't need the plus C when we use the fundamental theorem. And evaluating from negative one to one. Stick one in here, one cubed is one, plus one is two. We could stick this into a calculator if we wanted to. Stick negative one in here, negative one cubed is negative one, plus one is zero to this power, still zero, times eight ninths, still zero. So there's our definite integral. Let's compute this definite integral again, this time using the technique of changing our limits of integration, what I called method two. Because we've already worked through the details once, I'm going to skate over some of them this time around. We let u be x cubed plus one, du is three x x squared dx. And we wind up with four thirds, the square root of u du. Again, I'm skating through these details that we've already seen. This is where we end up. 
but this time we have a definite integral. So something has to go here and something has to go here. And remember how this works. Here, these limits of integration correspond to x. Here, they correspond to u. When x equals negative 1, u is negative 1 cubed plus 1, which is 0. When x is 1, u is 1 cubed plus 1 or 2. And now this is just a definite integral. We take an antiderivative because we're using the fundamental theorem. We don't bother with the plus C. We stick two in here. Two thirds times two to the three halves. We stick zero in here. We get to zero. Eight ninths times two to the three halves. And of course, two different methods for getting us to the same place. That's what we got the first time as well.